Hey everyone, it's time to Nephis and Chill, and after very complicated theory crafting, I am bringing to you a simple, one bar sorcerer heavy attack build that can get over 101,000 DPS and probably reach a ceiling of over 110k DPS if you want to keep pushing the damage. Suffice to say, the sorcerer class is reigning supreme of all the heavy attack class builds, so definitely check it out. This build has already been tested in VAS hard mode by yours truly to get several Immortal Redeemer trifectas and as of you probably watching this video, I've tested it in Veteran Cloudrest hard mode for a Griffin Heart as well, along with some other areas like DLC dungeon content and so forth. Let's quickly go over the build itself, the rotations you can use because there are two types of rotations, and I will of course showcase a VAS hard mode run where I use this build. First, we want to put 64 points into Magicka. While yes, you can put 64 points into Stamina with a different race like Orc or something like that, a lot of the skills, or basically every skill you will use is Magicka based and you probably still don't want to run out of resources somehow, right? Uh, even though it's probably unlikely. Munda Stone will be the Thief. Consumables will include Essence of Health Resistances if you want to go all out. This potion, which you can make with Mudcrab Chitin. Mountain Flower, Bug Loss, uh, will give you a unique set amount of spell and physical resistances by 5280, which does stack with the Oaken Soul's uh, major resolve, and also gives you health back. So it's kind of like a neat, uh, much stronger tripod, unless you need all three stat resources uh, sustained by a regular tripod potion. And that's pretty much up to you. And next we have consumables for in terms of food. You can use buy stat with max health and max magicka, or you can go with a pure max magicka stat food, uh, and that's really it. Speaking of food, this video is sponsored by HelloFresh, a service I still use to this day to get easy to handle, affordable ingredients delivered right to my door without the hassle of going to a grocery store. Making recipes with HelloFresh is, in fact, easier than using this heavy attack build. In fact, I'm pretty sure just like this heavy attack builds high damage numbers, the deliciousness of your final cooking results is literally guaranteed. If you'd like to support the channel and myself, click the pinned link in the video description or comments down below and try getting a HelloFresh box for yourself or your loved ones to try it out. Even better, you can also use my creator coupon code HF. 98586 to save even more money. Back to the build, your gear setup is going to be the typical heavy attack setup that most people will use for group content or trial content, such as one piece light slime crawl, five piece storm master medium on body. You also have one piece heavy sergeant's mail on your chest piece just to get the most out of resistances. And of course, since it is a heavy set sergeant's mail, you don't want that on body entirely. In fact, that's why we're going to put it on our only bar uh, with jewelry and weapon. Of course, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if people test different variations. I think I have my eyes on Plague Break a little bit. And of course, there are alternatives you can use if you're solo and not in group, like, you know, Five Piece Noble Duelist Silk to replace the Stormmaster, or Five Piece Order's Wrath, which is craftable as well. All of these sets are extremely easy to farm, perhaps with the exception of the Oaken Soul Ring Mythic, which depending on your RNG, may take you just a little while, but still not as bad as the first patch when they came out. In terms of traits, we want divines on all body pieces. We want enchantments to be magicka to boost our max magicka if we are dumping everything to magicka. Our jewelry traits are bloodthirsty and somebody some time ago asked me, hey, Nephis, is it worth it to put infused on your jewelry traits because technically won't sork get the most out of infused, boosted, you know, weapon or slash spell jewelry glyphs. And after testing, it's not worth it, unfortunately. So Bloodthirsty is still the play here for pretty much 99.9% .9 scenarios of, of all scenarios. Uh, your enchantments on your jewelry can be spell or physical harm. Depends on, you know, if you have a DK giving you minor brutality or something like that or a Templar in the group. But ultimately, I don't think it really matters. And for update 37, if you're going to go with you know, weapon damage and chance, you have 30 extra stam recovery, which is not a lot, but also not bad. And also, and of course, we have the inverse for the spell damage glyphs on your jewelry, which gives you 30 magical recovery as well, which is also not bad and not too much. Your weapon trait will be for the lightning staff, uh, precise. Enchantment will be most likely flame enchantment. 
And yeah, that's pretty much it for the gear setup. So for your only bar, for a pure single target damage setup, you're gonna have Hurricane, Barb Trap, Daedric Prey, uh, Volatile Familiar, Twilight Tormentor, and Power Overload. Now you can actually change Power Overload as an ultimate for Greater Storm Atronach, and I'll explain that more in the rotation part of this video. Other than that, you should definitely consider swapping in Hardened Ward or Critical Surge in place of Hurricane or Barb Trap if need be, and for some content like VAS Hard Mode, maybe you can go with a Blockade of Storms instead. You can still go with Haunting Curse instead of Daedric Prey, the other morph if you're going to use pets, Though, although I still highly recommend keeping pets as their passive damage is, is significant and you can still get similar numbers with the Haunting Curse as opposed to Daedric Prey. Although Daedric Prey seems to win out a little bit more consistently, at least from my testing. First, let's go over the Power Overload Rotation. This rotation should yield much higher numbers than I got at least on the stationary target rather than using Storm Atronach. In terms of numbers and the burst nature, the Power Overload Ultimate casts perform astronomically better than Greater Storm Atronach in every single aspect. Power Overload's Heavy Attack is also AoE, so you can use the ultimate on mobs as well and not just stationary bosses. This rotation for Sorcerer does require a bit of attention to off-balance timing in conjunction with your Power Overload. So, for your single target opening burst damage rotation, it should be pre-buffing with the following skills. Twilight Tormentor, Volatile Familiar, and Hurricane. As you walk up to your target, you cast Daedric Prey and then Heavy Attack Weave immediately into a Barb Trap cast, and without Heavy Attacking right after that, immediately toggle on Power Overload to take advantage of that small time frame window of Off Balance. Once that Off Balance disappears on the target, toggle Off Power Overload, and you should immediately be able to Heavy Attack Weave into your next skill, then you just resume kind of resetting your Daedric Prey, your Volatile Familiar, uh, and Hurricane and Trap. You don't need to recast Twilight Tormentor because it's kind of a waste of a GCD. And then, once the next off-balance timeframe pops up on the target, you toggle Power Overload again, and then use it until the end of the off-balance duration, like a Sith Lord. It is important to remember to not cast any other skill during the Power Overload Heavy Attack. Oh yeah, ban him. Definitely ban him. Oh, I'm homophobic now. Person is kind of a good person who never says shit in public. See, this is why the internet is one of the best and the worst things ever invented. What? Because she had shit like that. Like when they could say something, you know, amazing and impactful and Asians it. And they just say some racist, homophobic shit. They know if they did that face to face, they get the shit kick out of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well, I don't know, I don't think most people want to get beat the fuck down. Alright. How Shinzu? Uh, I'm getting fucked here. Maybe I can uh, get one on one? I was already in your bed, but. Oh, right. Uh, oh, one on one, let's go! Alright, that's good enough for me. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> one on one, let's go! The Storm Atronach rotation is much more simpler and quite a bit easier 
on just kind of like your thinking process uh, because you don't have to worry about the off balance timing you don't really have to really uh, you know get used to the toggle nature of power overload so while the storm atronach rotation may be a lower damage ceiling it is definitely easier to maintain the dps rotation this rotation for the sorcerer is quite straightforward and again doesn't require too much thinking about the off balance timing for your pre-buff rotation cast the following skills in order twilight tormentor volatile familiar hurricane and then cast your storm atronach away from the target without hitting it and of course immediately start heavy attacking then cast daedric prey after that first heavy attack then heavy attack weave into a barb trap and then heavy attack weave every skill from there on once you realize you can press the input for a skill before a heavy attack ends on pretty much either of these rotations so that your character queues up that skill instead of you pressing the input for that skill with a typical light attack rotation, uh, you'll find that it's a lot easier and a lot more calm, a lot more peaceful. And, it, and the light attack rotation tends to be a big obstacle for a lot of newer players trying to get used to the ESO combat system, which is very different from other MMOs. Overall, this heavy attack build has the highest damage ceiling out of all heavy attack classes thus far and specs, so have fun with it and see how far you can push. You probably get, you guys will probably get more DPS than I did. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, the rest of the videos is pure gameplay, so you can just observe the build in action. I do appreciate you guys checking out the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as that supports us a lot just to keep up with more heavy attack builds and ESO content in the future. <laughs> appreciate you guys. See you guys next time. Just like fucking two crit. Two crits. That's all I ask. Oh my god. Give me two fucking crits. I think I got the crit. I got lucky. I got oh, I'm getting lucky! <laughs> shit! Let's go. Maybe. Maybe this is it. So I'm waiting to make a cup of tea. I, uh, I'm waiting for this one. Okay. <laughs> Almost 101. Fuck. All right, that's 100k. Let's see. <laughs> I'm done. <sighs> How good were the crits, though? If they're just average crits, <laughs> they were not average crits. There you go, 100k. Fuck. Fuck me. Jesus. Okay. I mean, could have been 100. Wait, to have everybody's here. Three, two, one. Popping. And Kelly. Jumping, maybe? Yep, jumping. Evan? Quickly. 
Going from behind. Rocking. Five percent till final uh, middle jump. Comes to be behind you guys. Trey Horn for us. Kevin Colossus. Yeah, okay, after this jump. And Pilly. Pilly oh, quick. Rocking. Uh -oh. Last jump, after breath. After kite. Love this port to new cone. Uh, Evan? Oh, I didn't oh. know he was double on you, I'm sorry. <laughs> it would have been me crying in the club, then. Evan? Kill quickly, guys. Have the extent quickly. Coming okay. in. And Billy. Big damage, guys. Big damage. Miss Torn. Uh, entrance back. Kill it quickly. Grey Horn. Rock. I'm getting very good at this. Oh yeah, you are, Miss. Go back, exit, kill quick. Hell yeah. <laughs> we bit it, did we? Nah, that was less score. Aww. Uh, hey, another poly question mark? I know it will see. What's that? Oh, we'll do one more. Someone somewhere got a poly method. 